A Florida teen has made national headlines after murdering a 13-year-old boy and injuring another two people. Unfortunately, things would only get worse as people learned what he did only one year earlier, and it's downright shocking. It all started when 17-year-old Corey Johnson was invited over to spend the night at his friend's house. His friend's older brother had a few friends of his own over to hang out as well, meaning there were many people in the home at the time. Eventually, everyone went to sleep, but Johnson was wide awake. According to police reports, the teen decided at about 4 I M that he would attempt to kill at least three people in the home, 13-year-old Giovanni Brand, along with 13-year-old Dane Bancroft and his mother Elaine Simon. Johnson had even brought a knife from home with him, almost as if he was planning his attack long before he carried it out. Just like that, Johnson put a sick plan into motion and started to stab everyone in sight. Elaine heard what she believed to be Giovanni moaning and went upstairs to see what was going on, Officer Jennifer Brashier wrote in the probable cause affidavit. As she got to the top of the stairs, Johnson lunged at her with a knife, cutting her multiple times. By the time police arrived, they found 13-year-old Giovanni Brand dead with the other two victims bleeding from several stab wounds, but things would only get worse. Johnson would get arrested, but what he told police left the entire town and now the nation, stunned to learn what happened just one short year before. In his statement, Johnson advised he stabbed the victims because of his Muslim faith, Officer Jennifer Brashier wrote in the affidavit. Apparently, Johnson was upset that Giovanni had been idolizing famous people and calling them gods, which went against Johnson's Muslim faith. But that's not the only shocking detail to have emerged. In fact, things would only get worse as people learned about Johnson's reputation. Come to find out, school officials, local police, and even the FBI knew about the threat this teen posed to society as he had been radicalized through videos on the internet. Even worse yet, they had known for a year. Johnson's troubling history has been outlined with help from Palm Beach Post, January 2017, several local law enforcement agencies and the FBI came together with the staff at William T. Dwyer High School in Palm Beach Gardens, where Johnson was a student at the time. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office received information stating Johnson supported ISIS and that he had reached out to the terror group online, expressing his desire to join them. A detective with the Sheriff's Office interviewed Johnson for a mental health assessment and said the teen sympathized with terrorist organizations. The FBI initially did not want to charge Johnson because he was a juvenile and they believed a redirection approach would be the most beneficial regarding his conduct. March 2017, the FBI got consent to mirror Johnson's computer activity. The FBI spoke with Johnson, who denied any affiliation with ISIS and told him to cease all social media activities related to ISIS and any other terrorist organization. Summer of 2017, the FBI said Johnson was again making online posts and they were working to officially charge him. February 2018, the FBI said they had all the evidence needed to charge Johnson and that an assistant U. 
U.S. attorney also said there was probable cause to charge Johnson. March 5, 2018, Jupiter police checked in with the FBI to see where they were with the federal charges and the agent said the affidavits would be coming in the next several weeks. March 12, 2018, Johnson was in jail for the fatal stabbing in Palm Beach Gardens that occurred on March 11, 2018. Sadly, because the FBI dragged their feet, this allowed Johnson the opportunity to murder innocent people. Although I have the utmost respect for those who serve and protect, the FBI, especially in Florida, seems to be in need of some serious changes these days. Too often are we hearing of their failures when it comes to horrific crimes that they could have prevented. Most of the time, law enforcement is there to take care of things after it happens, but this, just like the recent mass shooting incident in Florida, could have been prevented. In fact, both instances should have been prevented. We need to be able to stop these things before they happen whenever possible. It's time for changes that make this a reality.